afternoon so in today's video we're looking at our communal area where we chill out you'll see above me I've got the yellow tarp which we've been using as a sunshade and a rain cover on the odd day that we've had rain which is not very often in the summer but we're about to enter rainy season so we've got a double barreled objective here so we want a more permanent structure with a solid roof that we can use to collect water in IBCs and you can see a rather attractive IBC behind me just over there so I'm going to join up three IBCs along the back and then we're going to build a shade house We're those weirdos, a family of seven Nearly three years ago we gave up our conventional lives to live, travel and work in our self-converted Sprinter van July 2021, with the increase in travel restrictions caused by Brexit and the pandemic, we decided to buy off-grid land in Portugal to live a more sustainable lifestyle. Follow along with our journey as we turn our beautiful but derelict land into our very own slice of off-grid heaven. Wildlands. Wildlands. We're going to build a shade house on the front is going to be four meters by three meters and have a funky entrance which is facing the sub to my left and the funky entrance is going to be made out of reclaimed wood off the land and then the front is going to be open facing the wood burner and then we're going to connect up the three IBCs and collect the rainwater off the roof during the winter and use that for watering in the early part of the next summer and throughout the winter and the spring as we start growing and build our nursery and polytunnel area. So I'm going to show you the build and how we construct the shade house and take you through the whole process. Um, similar principle to building a uh, carport or a large shed but we're only going to have a wall on the entrance which is more for looking good and for keeping out the sun and then behind me at the back of my chair where the three IBCs will be we're going to have a slatted wall A to keep the shade again and keep the sun out on hot days but also to uh, cover up the IBCs from the communal area and then as I mentioned the three IBCs will be joined together and connected to a hose that we can use for watering in this top area so having been an architect in a previous life, here are my plans for the shade area. Typically male, I tend to plan everything in my head, but I needed to sketch it out so I can work out what wood to order when I pick that up with Alan tomorrow morning. So I'm just gonna do myself a list based on my architect's plans. So my first job on this shade garden is to clear the area where I'm gonna put the pallets down for the IBCs to sit on. So I've gotta move Goth's pallet bench or sofa out the way. So uh, let's get on there. So that's the size of three IBCs with 20 centimetres to spare. So as you can see at the back, it's not straight or flat to the ground and there's quite a big raise there. So I've got to dig that out and get the spirit level out and get these roughly flat for the IBCs to sit on. 1978 Peugeot pickup, we're just off to the timber yard. What a beautiful car. What 
timber, but not very many sizes, but it's lovely. Morning. So a very chilly, but beautiful morning here at the Wildlands. So it's kind of day two of the Shade House today. So yesterday, Alan and I went over and collected a lot of wood from the timber yard in Castillo Branco. And Alan's coming today again, and we're going to collect some more wood and the roofing for the Shade House. And I just wanted to show you the glorious sunrise behind me and also let you listen to our cows. So some people complain about the noise of traffic wherever they may live. But some days here we have a lot of very excitable cows when they're in the field across the valley. They're not always there, a couple of days a month. Um, but they're very noisy when they're over the, in the field opposite. So I'll show you the pile of wood I've bought. And also got hold of a mitre saw finally yesterday. Which again is a brilliant piece of kit. I absolutely love mitre saws. Makes woodworking so much more easy and pleasurable. I'm very pleased with this one because it takes the same lithium batteries as all our other tools. So a useful bit of kit. And I think we've got all the tools we need now. Not just for the shade house but to build our tiny house which has now been put back to next year. So let me show you all the wood we've collected up so far. And we've got a couple of thousand screws of varying lengths. So we've got lots of three metre sections of Nordic pine. It's quite expensive. We've got a couple of four metre runs. And then a lot of nice flat pine. And then a load of three meter runs. We've got one of the IBCs there, which are gonna go along here. So we've only got three IBCs at the moment, but that space is for four IBCs. So the plan is, is that the roof of the shade house, which will be to the left of where the current yellow tarp is, the water will run by guttering into the IBCs. Missy's got some hawthorns drying there for tea. And then round the back of the van, we've got two other IBCs. These are food grade IBCs, although we'll only be using them for watering the plants. The roof. The Allen. The Maxmat. Tools ready. Roofing is in. It's quite a nice colour. Sort of terracotta orange. Got all the wood. A lot of slats just for the back so they get dappled light and a bit of shade. So let me get my tools up. Doing, Dom? Getting very hot, which is why I'm building a sun shade or a shade house, which is not very easy when you don't have a flat surface <laughs> and you've got four meter length. So, this is going to be the supporting timber of the roof, and where I'm now, this would be the entrance at the front. So I'm just putting these corner pieces on to hold it together while it goes up in the air. But it isn't easy, so it'll be uh, like this. <laughs> it's like all right. Right we'll, angles. We'll call it quirky. We'll call it quirky, yeah. It's like shabby chic, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to drill some more holes. Screw me very long screws in. So 
those pilot holes for these really thick screws. Level wood must be warped slightly. This is a impact. problems are you wrestling with while you do this? Uh, so not having a flat piece of ground you know like a concrete drive or something like that that is even vaguely flat and then the wood is pine Nordic pine it's the best wood I could find everyone said it's the best wood but it ain't half bowing in the sun which I can't do anything about even if I put it under a tarp so you can see this is straight and uh, if I line it up, that's kind of flattish. And there's like a centimetre's difference almost here where this is bowed. And the sunshine's rather hot on you too, isn't it? The sunshine is very hot. And it's surprising, you wouldn't think that drilling would use up much energy, but I'm absolutely sweating me nuts off. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, we're going to leave that in, aren't we? No. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, it's very hot with my power tools. We should put um, Benny Benassi's satisfaction <laughs> from this. only done three or four hours on it so far it's been a little bit frustrating because the wood is quite warped and not very straight I'll show it to you on the ground but I'm building the structures as best as I can which is protracted by the fact that I have no building skills and there's no flat surfaces like a concrete garage forecourt or anything like that that you might have at a house so I'm having to use bits of wood to prop it up um, so I'll be doing some more on that today. I'm going to go into Castillo Branco to go to a plumbing shop to see if we can get connectors for the IBCs. Oh, hi. I got big boy.